107, and he's the 21 year old. So, oh yeah, now, Sean, you've told me before about which one you think is the more attacking, which one's the more attacking. Which one again uh, summarizes the play? Squash XL Pro is an elite team that work hard to train, play, and run squash events on our journey to climb the world rankings. Like, subscribe, comment, pick up some of our merch on Teespring. So, so the one that I would say is more the sort of more retriever type play. He, if you don't know much about him, he has a bit of a cross country background. So he used to do a lot of running when he was a lot, lot younger. So he's very used to keeping the rallies going for a long period of time. Tim, well, on the other hand, maybe a little bit more aggressive, trying to dictate the point a lot more, trying to attack the ball. Last week, Sean, it was a straight down victory uh, for Luanda, but I think there was a little bit of an injury niggle, or just, just uh, something like that for Tenwa, and uh, a good win for Luanda. Plus, plus, there's also the mental side of things as well. Tenwa last week had a few very, very tough matches leading up to the final, including a big five-setter in the semi-final, where Luamba, I don't think, dropped a single game throughout the tournament, oh, if I'm correct. So he's probably a little bit more fresher going into the final as well. Ooh, jammed that one in the back wall. This, this week, you'd probably argue it's slightly changed around this time. Tim was the one yet to drop a game, if I'm correct, so far. And Luamba has dropped a few games earlier in the round. So it'll be interesting to see how things go this time around. Well, the semi-finals of those straight games, albeit that there was a 12-10, in uh, both of them, and uh, Luamba up against uh, Amir. Yeah. And we had Tim uh, up against uh, Duncan Lee. And they're both interesting games. Uh, I wouldn't say that either Luamba and Tim dominated. Uh, maybe one game in each one. Yeah, they were, there were certainly periods in those games where they were being outplayed by the Malaysians. So give them some praise of the way how they handled the two Shalisi brothers. but. To the Chalisi brothers' credit, they did well to get back into those games. If I remember correctly, I think Timo actually at one stage was down 10-6 in the second game against Duncan to come back to win a 12-10. So it just shows how much hard work they had to do to get the three love wins last night. Now, we were asked yesterday about some strapping for Timo. And I think, has he still got that strap? Yeah, I just eyesight. saw it. you can see it. It's about the short line, isn't it? Um, on the right leg. On the right knee. And I'm sure I've got uh, Paul Ascot watching from Brisbane. Uh, hello to you, Paul, and hello to anybody else watching as well from wherever you are. So some uh, fairly long rallies to start off in this match. I think we're going to see a few of those. We're not going to see too many winners uh, too early, are we? Well, that's probably one, while Louis is certainly used to having that sort of play, Tim has done a pretty good job staying in the rallies. I haven't seen, was very really impressed last night how he wasn't giving away too many mistakes in a row. Even in that game where he trailed, it was more his opponent just playing some really good attacking squash, and he just did well to hang in there, didn't give away too many cheap ones there, so was able to get the confidence back, which is why he was on a good run there. But remember from the game last week between these two, Tim was maybe a little bit loose at times. Yeah, that's right. There was those, those areas were there. Yeah, it? so he'll be. So he certainly looks like how he's gone so far this week. He's certainly improved on that. There, just long rally and decided to take the big shot. Maybe a couple of shots too early. Yeah, he 
probably wouldn't want to get into really long rallies as the one but certainly would be the fitter of the two but if he can make if he can hit his shots with a lot of purpose on the shots then maybe he'll make louis do a little bit more work than what he will need to What a long rally from both players. That felt like an entire game in that one point just there. Yeah, I've talked to a few Masters players watching some of these matches. They've, they've almost <laughs> said, look, we'll be done after a few shots, so no. you won't see us do that ever again. No. Uh, that was lengthy, that's for sure. And that's uh, still early stages of the match. A oh, beautiful shot there from Luamba. That was one of his streams last week, starting to take a little bit more, dictate a little bit more of the play here. They are just taking the ball a lot more early than what he was, he's used to. We saw that yesterday well, in I the mean, semi-final. Who wants to play 40 shot rallies when you can finish it off in 20? Well, Louis one that probably doesn't mind a 40 shot rally, <laughs> but against these, some of these players he needs to start. let the call there, nothing else in it. Certainly attempting to get out of the way and they're trying to attempt to uh, hit the shot as well. Yeah, just a bit of safety at the on the backswing, so right call there. Nothing too tricky about that decision. Tim, I'm showing a lot more patience early in this game so far. Usually in previous games he would look to take the ball a bit earlier than he's used to, so he's doing a good job hanging in there this time around. Oh. Just as I say that, yeah, yeah. you put the curse on them there. That's uh, definitely we... that's definitely the commentator's curse right there. Exactly. Sorry, Tema. Yeah. And just a quick wrap of uh, the women's final. It was Lana Harrison winning in the three over Abby Palmer. Giving it time in the wall. And there we go. Just pushing that one too tight on the 10. You know, he did, probably didn't need to go quite that tight, did he? Yeah, he set the opportunity up. Probably needed to push it deep on that occasion rather than going for the short one. Louis was already there waiting for that drop. to grab it and take it and it's uh, just one or two points at the very most so far yeah too loose on that one so Timo grabbing the stroke on that occasion yeah that was a fair call yeah Ooh, playing 
that one off the body. Let's see if we can finish. Oh, yes. trying to mix it up there, Louis. It's not a shot he usually does, and you can probably see why. <laughs> Looked very uncomfortable when he tried to play that shot. Us, Sean. It's a tricky, a bit more of a tricky call there. It was a little bit, Temo wasn't in the best position there, but Louis sort of went back to Temo's position as well. So it was a little bit of a collision there. I could sort of understand, it was certainly a 50 50 call in my opinion. I could certainly see no lets coming out, but I sort of can understand the lead as well. Bit of a tricky call to be made there. No then. No then on that occasion. Now, no, Timmer wasn't going to get that shot back. So I think it's just got a little bit scrappy here with lets, no lets in the odd stroke as we get to seven apiece. Yeah, just a bit of a some loose shots from both players. It's not just a lets, just even a few uncharacteristic mistakes that just need to get their games going again. That's better play there from Timber. It started moving Louis around on, in that point. Quite a bit of a chop on the ball and quite flat almost. And very successful. <laughs> there was a lot of backpedaling there. <laughs> That's the fastest backpedaling I've seen. Yeah, I don't think there's much of an argument there. It's probably not the best argument from Tim on that occasion. <laughs> but I want to look that one back on the live stream. And the punch on the strings is not going to help your strings. Or oh, your, oh, your fist. Yeah, well, if, when you're playing, it's always the racket's fault if you miss, okay? Yeah, well, exactly. So that, that's, that's the rule when you're playing, but when you're watching, it's always the player's fault. So uh, just remember that when you're on the court. Is a, your racket's fault or the uh, officials? There's certainly been a lot of chat from a few players about the officials this weekend. I'm sure it's positive. Some positive, some negative, so as expected. that Luanda not pleased with uh, that Sean um, which particular ball was he uh, concerned about oh it was the last one there where yeah. he it was a bit of a tricky situation there pe picking the ball up so yeah it won't be too 
Hasn't had quite the rub of the green so far in this match so far. Yeah, we're seeing a bit of New Zealand yeah. slang right there. I'm trying to, I'm not trying to fish. Famous New Zealand words right there. <laughs> well, from a very high standard uh, to the at the beginning of the set, it's just dropped away a little bit, and the players uh, struggling to be as smooth as what they wanted earlier on. Just need to get back to the basics again. Just get the. Just get their rhythm, not trying to force it. That's a big shot there, nice. kept it low and tight there, Luamba, so he'll be pleased to get through that, po that, that rally, considering the importance of that point. Yeah, Tenwa just finding himself jammed up against the wall, couldn't really do too much with the shot. So you can see here, just a little bit loose from both players, a lot of cross courts which we haven't, didn't see early in the game. Again, a very loose ball there. Yeah, disappointed with that. It was a uh, shot that would deserve to be hit. Right him back at himself. Excellent shot there from Tema. We oh, anticipated that one well. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, t yeah. yeah, Luamba just anticipating the shot too early on that occasion, so. Oh, getting back on now for the second game. And, well, tight as we expected. And uh, Sean Wigan, uh, tell me, was that. That was what you expected, right? Just keeping it tight in the scoreline, 12-10. Nothing really much in it, was there? Yeah, it was just a little bit loose from both players, especially at the uh -huh. end stages of that mat of that game. So certainly one thing they would have been both told is just maybe strain up a little bit more, especially Luamba is that just forced a few uncharacteristic mistakes from him, which costed him the first game. So it'll be so that'll be one of the big keys here for for him in particular to get off to a good start here yep. so very important he keeps that con get that control back because the ball's flying a little bit more this week compared to say last week in Pamir just got to be a bit more prepared for that quicker ball coming back yeah much better play there move move him around didn't go for anything spectacular and set up the boast at the end. Ooh, the thing is, with that shot into the tin, it was halfway down the tin, it wasn't even the top. Letting his brother, big brother, back in a little bit more. You uh, thinking four or five or straight? 
It's only looking like it could be a very tight one here. It'd be fascinating to see how how the start of this game goes. So far, Louis looking a lot more tighter than what he was in the in stages of the first game. Really nice shot there from Temwa though. So among the three finals previously that they've played in, the Pan Muir, that was a straight game victory for Luamba. And two finals last year, one of them in Morrinsville, a win to Luamba, and one in Northland, again a win to Luamba. Uh, earlier this year they played in a, I think it was a second round in a tournament in France, and that was a victory to Temwa. He's got two victories, and I think it's five in total to the one when it comes to PSA Challenger tournaments. And I also saw a stat before as well. They've both made five finals overall. Luamba, of course, having the three titles that he has beaten Timur in, while Timur sit, still sitting on zero. He's had some very close calls, so yeah. he'll be very much wanting to break that duck. Yeah, just to get your first PSA Challenger titles. Just a nice thing to tick off. Temwa just acknowledging Luamba's sportsmanship there. Well, it's difficult if you don't with your brother, isn't it? Yeah, they do, they do show a lot of respect for each other when they do play on the court. And when they do go on the court, it, their focus is to still go out there and win, but then when they walk off the court, they're, they do show that good brotherly love that you want to see. We weren't quite getting that in Egypt this morning, or in fact the whole tournament at the uh, World of Squash Champs. Ooh, look at that for the bows. He's got it. Well played there from Luamba. Dictated the point very well in that get in that rally. So Sean, uh, just a quick mention about the uh, World Squash Champs. Uh, you've uh, seen Paul Cole lost in five games to uh, Al Shabagi. Uh, what's your thoughts on the crowds that you've seen or heard on TV? Yeah, it's a very tricky situation over there at, in Egypt, of course, with a lot of top Egyptians playing well over there it's only gonna fire the players up and with maybe hasn't a lot of the non-egyptian players have struggled a little bit for example paul probably just almost feel like they've got to do a little bit more just to pull out the victory so so home court advantage yeah. is an advantage yeah definitely in something like that like in caro well, the next tournament coming up for Paul Cole and all of the top players is Alguna. So that's uh, next week. Well played there from Louis. Well, decent lead and uh, he's just got to keep his head and see if he can keep it going here. He's played so well in this, the second game after the 10 1 won the first. That's nice. Yeah, some really nice rallies now from Luamba starting to take control of the rallies. So, what did coach John Duggan say to each one? Because he went from one player to the other. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to be in that situation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm uh, just uh, wondering what uh, coach, uh, uh, coach and father, not really coach, but father Evans uh, would say. He would probably just say, be nice to your brother on the court. <laughs> He's laughing at the moment. Yeah, and that's 
That's pressure that Louis has put on Temwa there. That's a, many would like to call a forced mistake from the previous rallies. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily winning shots or anything. It was just putting the pressure on. I've got the points lead and I'm playing with good authority. Oh, well played there. Good. Really good shot. We saw a lot of that last night in that semi-final. Again, it was the balance there as well. He was very well balanced the way he played that shot. Footwork through to the actual shot itself. <laughs> Pretty sure it was down as well. Yeah. Don't think Luama will complain too much for that one. Still has a few game balls here. That serve was very close to the line. Oh, beautiful oh, shot finish. there. Nice way to finish. So we are uh, one game all. And one game all between uh, these two brothers. It is uh, Lawamba Chalisi and the uh, black shirt up against Timwa Chalisi. And uh, Lawamba currently ranked 105 in the world. And Timwa 125 in the world. Just saying uh, a little while before that it is all the finals. So far, three of them have gone to the Wamba Chelsea. And uh, Sean Wigan, 12 10 to Tenwa, the first game, and 11 4 to the Wamba, the second. Not sure what to expect from this, the third. Well, the Wamba was much more controlled in that game. Didn't bring out the rational mistakes he was producing in the first game. They'll be very pleased to have got a bit of his rhythm back from that second game. Now it's important for him to try and back it up. Not trying to force the shots that he was maybe trying to do in the first game. those sort of situations a bit fascinating because yeah. on the one hand if if he if Louis was in the way well that was a bit of a loose low and attacking shot so it was an opportunity for Timwa to really put pressure on Louis so you would probably give it as a stroke on the other hand if it was if Timwa could have played the ball well he probably should have played it and that should be a no left so it's always fascinating when I see them given as yes let's so do you, as the player behind, take a swing and hit your opponent either with your racket or with the ball? Well, again, you know, you've got to say, is that person out of the way? Yeah. And if, you know, if that, if that guy is still in the way, it is affecting the shot, attacking shot there. So, so you've got to say, it's a drug in that sort of situation. So it's always fascinating. What would the Masters you, do? Yeah. The masters would just swing and hit each other, wouldn't they? Well, they'll just try and milk a stroke anyway, so... <laughs> exactly. They'll say, why is not a stroke? So, yeah. they'll just go yeah, straight up true. to that sort of situation. And what about... No, but I mean, in all seriousness, what would juniors be looking for there? They'd be looking for the stroke, or would they be trying to play? I think you get more juniors probably would actually try and hit right. through the ball. So, they would actually... Some of them probably don't call too many legs anyway, unless they are more of a physical player. But then as you start to go into the sort of senior side, you see a bit more physicality. Right. You know, you think of someone like Zach, you play someone like Zach, Zach Miller, for example, who mm -hmm. you do have to be wary re of what he can do. So yeah. it does get maybe a little bit more argy-bargy sort of thing. So. That's a beautiful nice shot there from Luamba. Again, getting a very good start here. He's certainly changed his game up again. Well, he's just upped his tempo and intensity from the first game. I mean, it was even Stevens to start with, and then we saw uh, Tenwa get away a little bit more. I mean, it's still close. It went to 12-10. 
And again, he's not doing anything special again. He's just keeping keeping it simple, getting good length there, setting up those loose ones from Temwa. In turn, I think, just needs to get a bit more length to the shot. That's, that's a better shot. Yeah, just try and get it more to the back of the court. Get, get Luamba under a bit more pressure. Because as we know from history, Luamba can drag on for a long period of time, so... <laughs> Tenwa probably will want to try and keep that pressure going rather than dragging the game out as long as he needs to. And what's the call? Another. We got a shake of the head from Lewamba. And we've got Tenwa explaining what he was trying to do. Issue there for Temwa was his racket was down and was attempting to move around. So it did sort of look like. So we're not going to get a change uh, in the decision. But he was uh, asking for why and how, how the decision was made. Yeah, so uh, in my opinion, it just looked like his record was a little bit down and did run into Louis behind. So it doesn't put him in a really good situation there anyway. Yes, the shot wasn't the most amazing shot there, but referees don't make a decision oh, based on how the shot is. And that's, that's the shot, though. If you had one go against you, or not in your favour there, you yeah. gotta refocus and not play too much of a risky yeah, shot, those, which you just lost. Those shots are, those rallies are for me the most important. Is after a big rally or a big, you know, a big decision. or a big decision like he just had. It's how you back up after that that certainly makes make or breaks it makes or breaks a pr player. Well, he's hooked it up and. Now Timo that knew that one. He knew that he hampered he uh, the chase. I think Tim was just getting a little bit loose again, just just making it a bit hard for himself there. Just got. I don't think Louis doing that much different there when it comes to his footwork. So Tim just needs to go back to basics. Yep. Just try and. Work the point, don't bring the referees into the play here. Because one thing refs don't like to do, especially here in New Zealand, is if you've got... If you do have a player that is being tricky to them, they will keep being harsh to them on their decisions, unless they can change the style they move around. Oh. Well, and, he, and he definitely needed that one. Even if it was a lucky shot, he definitely needed that one. So what you've been saying is that referees remember how you treat them and uh, how they can treat you. A lot of play around the tee there. Yeah. Wasn't much movement from either player. Yeah, you can see Tim was starting to take the ball maybe a bit too early to the sh to the front now. Gave him a lot of credit in that first game with the way he just handled that pace, pushing it to the back a lot more than what he's used to. But now he's just starting to go back maybe to the old roots, just trying to do too much too early. But again, that sort of Ooh. credits to Louis as well with the way he's been playing. He's trying to he's forcing Tim to take maybe a few risks earlier due to that. Checking there as uh, Luamba, that uh, no problems and coming back to 5 8. 
Surprised Louis did go for that drop on his last shot there. I thought he would have tried to use a bit more of the back there. He set it up very well. And I felt Timwell was just waiting for that ball. Just keep him tied to the wall. Who's going to switch around? <laughs> repeating, yes, let. In other words, let's just get on with it, guys. We had both brothers uh, looking at the officials, almost hands on hips, saying, well, what are you going to give us? Again, a very tricky situation there. I, again, I go back to that comment I made before. I feel like that was a very loose shot from Luamba there. Mm -hmm. It was a very tough shot for Temwa to play back. I feel like... Even if it is in the rules, I feel like the refs need to just have a think about, well, how much does that actually affect the players? That was a really good attacking opportunity there for Temra, and it does feel a bit hard done by. He only gets a... he deserves a bit of... So you see there, that was Stroke. a very... So it's, so again, sort of similar situation, very loose ball to the middle. It's an opportunity for Temra to take control, so well, he's, uh... deserve, deserve the stroke on that occasion. Come back quite strong now. It was uh, down what was at eight three, and now closing the gap nicely. So we just had a couple of loose shots from Luamba, and once again it is one game all between these two. That one camera. Gets that one back. Oh. Oh. Going? Oh, he the gets wall. that one back. Wait for it. Oh, he's got, that, he's got that back. And wait oh. for it. Ah, oh, for all. Ah, oh, for all of that, we only get a let. <laughs> well, I'm not sure whether you could put it either way, though. Uh, could you have given that as a strike anywhere? I don't think so. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Timo trying to play that ball. He had Luamba under a lot of pressure at the end stages of that rally. Well, there was some great retrieving from both players and but plenty it, of opportunities where each one looked as though they could take it. Yeah, a bit anticlimactic, unfortunately. Had to, fit, had to finish on a let. I think that's the one thing crowds don't like. And after that sort of point, it finishes on a let. Definitely 
picked up here in these last few rallies. Oh, that's incredible. Oh, he gets that back. Ah, uh, what a rally. Get Great depth on beautiful, the shot. Beautiful short shot there from Luis. Set that drive up really well and just timed it to a very nice play there, Will. Good rally there for Luamba and that's a very important it's not winner quite there. Really, just slowing it down. 9 6. And fair enough to just take your time in between the points. And yes, in it. Yeah, a bit of safety on that one. Deserve the lead on that one. Loose there from Timwa. Gets himself back in the rally Jeez. here though. Got the options. He goes for it. Oh, oh fourth. Another mistake there from Timwa. So there we go, 10 6. He's uh, managed to keep the, the lead or get back into the lead a bit more. It was uh, fairly tight there for a while. In the middle on that too. Oh, I am just looked good. So the first uh, clinch, fist pump from the Wamba Chilisi. So we're just reminding both players to get back on board a little bit earlier. Actually being ready on the court ready to go rather than just walking on the court when the rest call time. I mean, that's a, it's a fair call. Um, they can both say, well, hang on, it's a final, it's whatever. We've got to walk over a few people to get here. But uh, in the end, it's professionalism. It's a PSA Challenger tournament, so you've got to stick with the rules. Okay. What's he after there? Saying the court's getting a bit wet. Let's slip it. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, it's one of those weird Auckland days, hailstorm one second and sunlight the next, and a big crowd of people here in around the two main courts, let alone all the other courts as well, because we do have the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland yeah, Open, and we've got all divisional uh, grades as well, don't we? Yeah, so Auckland, North Shore's done, has had a few issues the last year, maybe with some of the courts just getting a little bit wet especially in these sort of conditions as you say Auckland is the Auckland weather is very unpredictable one minute it's quite can warm be now. one minute can be sunny one minute be, can be be ra raining one minute it can be hot one minute it can be cold so you never know what to expect with this weather and that's probably what's caused a bit of condensation on the wet walls so that's clearly what they're trying to sort out at the moment uh, yeah, I think with so many people in here, whether it's on these courts or the other courts, and uh, the temperature's certainly gone up. Uh, plus, we are mid-afternoon rather than the uh, usual squash at 7.38 or 10 o'clock as your game was the other night. And Sean, just while we're waiting, we do have another match on uh, the I'm other court. right back on court now. Uh, we're almost ready. Yes, we are. We've got Joe Smythe, one of the top juniors of New Zealand, playing had all these other big matches, some of the best juniors around New Zealand playing as well, so it's good to have them involved in the Auckland Open, the Barfoot and Thompson yep. Auckland Open. Yeah, well, for the juniors, it's a New Zealand selection tournament, so the so this is one of two selection tournaments, the other one being the New Zealand Junior Open, which was about a month and a half ago, so this is, this is their second and final selection tournament, so can't remember exactly when the team will be announced after this tournament, but it'll be pretty soon to which we'll have six boys players and I think six girls players that will head over to France for the World Juniors. Some nice angles, he got it. Chasing well, not quite enough though, so a good shot there from Tim Chalisi and what have got with the racket. A lot of stoppages at the moment on 
in this match. This will be a master's dream. A lot of rest time. And we'll just give the thumbs up that the walls are okay for the moment. There's uh, Sarah Lowe from uh, Squash Hawk and coming out with a few extra towels. When you have the walls getting wet or, or a bit of moisture on them, what about the floors? Is it uh, similar or is it the walls worse on these courts? Well, the big issue with wet walls is it soon as it starts getting off, it can also get sweat onto the wet. It can the condensation can transfer onto the squash ball as well, so it suddenly starts making the ball a little bit more skiddy as well. No, skiddy as well. So that that's why it's very important to make sure the walls are in good good condition, so we don't get a bit of a scrappy affair. Just uh, the brothers just looking at each other, checking things out. And uh, sometimes some players don't even remember to score half the time, but we'll certainly which side they're serving from. Why pretend I don't know the score just to get a little bit yeah, of extra risk, rest? Yeah, exactly. That's the other tactic, isn't it? But it also just steadies a player, whether you know, it doesn't matter how good you are, it just steadies you. Yeah, especially after some big rallies, it's sometimes good just to yeah. give yourself a little bit of extra time just to refocus and it's not necessarily just the physicality of a big rally that can affect a player, it can be the mental side as well. Well played there from Lowy. And you can see both players feeling the heat having to wipe it out all the time. It's Yeah, no wonder the walls are now getting yeah. wet. Must be from... He's trying to say, I want my bro to hurry up. And certainly Luwamba very keen to get on with the points, uh, whereas Timra's bit more methodical, or at least in this match, trying to take his time. And Timo saying he's not getting out of the way, not letting me play the ball. Well, again, it goes back to those sort of points from earlier in the in the match. The few sort of tricky situations where Timo probably didn't try enough effort to get around. So you get into that sort of situation, you may get some refs that will stick to their original um, decisions and will 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 give a no lead on those sort of situations unless they see the player trying to get around. So it's very important. So in my opinion, Tim was just got to show a bit more effort to get around. Then he might be able later on in this match to get a few calls a bit more his way. So in order to. So 5-4 to Tenwa over Luwamba in this game. However, it is... Oh, we got the reversi right <laughs> there. <laughs> it is uh, Luwamba Chalisi leading am, by two games to one I am very overall. disappointed I didn't hear a, a clap from the crowd there. I thought that was a very impressive shot. It's a North Shore special from some of our Masters players. So very disappointed I didn't see a clap from anyone. <laughs> Depth. Let's get it to the back wall. Particularly, we're getting a couple of variable bounces at the back wall. And let's see if I'm uh, too much checking where his brother was on that shot. Yeah, yeah well nice. played there. 
quite early with the bow, so it was almost sideways from the shot. But it did come off. It did come off a bit funny off the side wall. Were you talking about? Yes. The towel down again. Yeah, it did come off very funny with that last boast. We've got an extra dehumidifier in here now, bought in. Yeah, that dehumidifier was used during the earlier matches as well, so I think they've just had to bring it back in just to make sure it keeps the walls in good condition. Nice yeah, shot there nice. from Temwa. It's not always going to help if you wipe your sweaty hand all over it either. Yeah, no wonder. <laughs> I've just said this before. Sure, surely you, you take away some of your sweat. Well played there from Luamba. Very nice drop to the front. Yeah, just took the pace off the ball and had the angle. It's never going to give much bounce back. Really got himself in trouble. Kind of well, he was, out well, if you heard what he said, he actually agreed it was a stroke, but he's more yeah. defending what he said from his other ones there. It's, there are those situations, just needs to. You know, it's Seminole, a big, you know, Seminole, really big moment in the game now. It's where you probably don't want to get into the ref's hands once again, yeah. especially if it comes to a very important decision. You just want to. Refocus, get yourself back into the point here. Constructed the point pretty well there, Tim. But just a really disappointing drop at the end there to right in the bottom of the ten. So. So there's so there's a bit of a warning there for Temwa, just taking a bit too much time in between the rallies. Well, you can see that Luamba's getting being frustrated by it. Yeah, well, Luamba's. I say Luamba's a very fit player, so he will, will want to keep the rallies going. We saw at the end of that third oh, game, just Timwa started to slow down a little bit after those really big rallies. So we might be seeing something very similar coming up here. Oh, what's your call? Yep, gets. Yeah, there we go. Gets the stroke and goes into. Uh, Game point, match point. I mean, he almost collected him with the racket there, maybe a little bit of acting on it. No, the ball was pretty much going to hit him already, so can't really argue with the stroke on that one. Oh, there we go, that is. Game set and match. 10 12, 11 4, 11 7. And uh, Sean, we're going to leave you for a few comments to wrap up as we get ready for a presentation. Yeah. We'll